Hey everybody, Pinchy out, and we're back again with another episode with the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. On today's episode, we're going to start tearing down the back end to give you guys a quick look and guide on what is what on the back end of this bike. So, without further ado, let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's Garage with motorcycles. Okay, so for us to go forward, the seat needs to come off. But to remove the seat, we have to remove this side cover. This is the right side side cover, which is locked by a key. So get your, uh, pretty much your OEM key. Oh. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it to the right. We're gonna pull back slightly, okay? Don't yank it all the way out, just pull back slightly and then push down, pull down, sorry. And that gets you, ooh, excuse me, access to pretty much the next portion of the next compartment. Here's your tool kit, which is important. And then once you have your tool kit out, see this little lever right here, this little peg, this guy right here, that is the lever for the seat. This is, what you, this is what lets you remove the seat from the bike. So if we pull this back, pull the seat. Remember, when you pull this back, pull the seat up from the back. Not from here, because it, it's, it's wedged underneath here. So you're gonna pull up and pull back, just like that. Nothing crazy, okay? Now that we're here, you guys can actually see how the mechanism works for the seat. This little thing right here, disengages the little lever that's right here. That's all it is, it's so simple. So, so simple that allows you just to put the seat in and take it off, really cool. Here's the factory ECU. These are the two bolts that hold the gas tank here in place. Um, this is the air box. This is the factory air box right here underneath this portion. You gotta disassemble the sides for that, but we're not gonna get there yet. Um, right here, I believe, let's pull this guy out. Yeah, this is the, it's one of the relays. I'm gonna get the wire diagram for you guys. And I'm also gonna provide you guys in the description pretty much the wire diagram and the repair manual for this bike because everybody needs a repair manual. Everybody needs to know how to tear down their anything like a car or a bike, tear it down completely, service it, repair it, or do anything with it. Don't take it to the dealer if you're handy and you're willing to actually take apart something and fix it. There's no reason for you to spend gobs and gobs of money if a repair or service can be done very quickly and affordably at home. Now that we're here, we're gonna take off the two 10 millimeter bolts right here. Remember, these are just 10 mils. I'm gonna pull this little ground cable out. Oh, there's a third one, sorry, three. Okay. Now, while we pull this out, you can either leave it hanging or you can dismount it, dismount the seat cable from here. Just like that, just so it just hangs out of the way. Now, depending on how you like to do things, I don't mind keeping my, my hardware kind of next to everything. That way I know where it belongs. Um, I don't want to scratch the bike, so I'm going to set this aside. Right on top of my seat. Now here, we have full access now to the battery. Um, the battery is right here mounted with a little strap. It's got a little cover here so you have access to the power and then the ground over here on the far left and the right. Um, the battery is held together by a rubber strap that has a little pull tab. You just pull straight down and it lets you pretty much um, 
get that off and then you can slide the battery out once you disconnect it. Uh, right up here at the very top is the fuse box. This guy, pretty much you just gotta, what is it? Uh, you pinch right here and pull over and it gives you pretty much your full array of fuses right here that's already um, set up to your bike and obviously for whatever they're used for. So it's that guy. Um, this is a relay, I just don't know what this one's for. Again, I'll look it up in the manual. The air box sits right here, and now to get the air box out, you have to pull the battery out. It slides over and comes out once you yank it out of over here from the back. Um, now we're gonna show you guys the other side cover to show you guys what that shows you and what it exposes for you as well. Now using the provided Allen wrench that's in actually your toolkit, there's an Allen bolt right here, right next to the ECU on the left side. We're gonna unbolt that. Okay. Well, careful with the washer, don't lose it. It won't be a big deal, but we got that out. Now the reason why we need that off. This will give us the ability here to pull our cover off. So it's out, pull, up, okay? And that gives you the, pretty much the left side cover, which exposes now the relays and the intake box, which you have uh, the ability to do the service on the intake itself. We'll give you guys a really close up uh, a view of this right now. All right, so now we're actually on the other side of the, uh, of the bike. We have, you can see here, this is the intake box. This is the main wire loom that goes to the relays. And we have quite a few of them, we got one, two, three, four, five relays here. Now, one thing that a lot of people, uh, on, especially on these bikes, they love to swap these relays out for German relays or Bosch. Uh, they're a very good brand. Um, if you're not in, the, in California uh, and any other state pretty much that has a lot of uh, rain or water, probably highly recommend swapping these out. Um, from what I've read and heard, these like to corrode really quick and cause you a lot of grief down the road with your bike. So definitely something to, um, to, to factor in during your maintenance or maybe doing a couple more modifications. I will be swapping out actually this air box for a set of a uh, intake uh, cone filters um, plus a tune. I am gonna be tuning this bike so I want a different uh, look to this bike, and I also am gonna be doing a two to one exhaust system on this one as well. Um, nothing crazy, I just want a different look, and I also want a different sounding bike as well. Um, but again, you have your two, four, five relays that are here that are fully accessible, and they're easy to pretty much pull in and pull out. Uh, let's see here. Holy crap, dude, these are so familiar. Yeah, did not know that. <laughs> There's enough grease on these things for, for like 20 relays. But yeah, you can see there, it's just soaked in uh, electronic uh, grease here. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's also not a good thing. That can also prevent uh, connections, you know? Um, so yeah, all four relays are here. There's a top one, more likely that's a flasher. That's pretty large. Most relays pretty much control headlights, flashing, brake light, turn signals, um, ignition, fueling, to name a few. Uh, on a motorcycle, again, check in the description below for the owner's manual. I don't know what exactly each relay does, but if you guys look at the owner's manual and look at the wire diagrams, more than likely you'll know exactly what they are when you break them down. Um, we're gonna open up the intake to show you guys how to service it as well. 
So the intake cover is held by three Phillips screws, which we're going to remove right now. Now, from what I've seen and from other people that a lot of companies or a lot of guys like to remove the cover and just use a intake that pretty much has a metal plate and just has a hole right here to give the bike a little bit more uh, breathing room. Honestly, I don't know how much an improvement in performance that gives you, but you know, give you that placebo effect. Don't know. Uh, until I start modifying this and tuning it, uh, honestly, whenever you do intakes and exhausts, you don't benefit much until you fix the fueling to compensate for it. You know, other than that, you're just making noise. And then this pulls straight out, just like that. And that's your intake. This is the entire box. Oh, there's a, these are ported. These are, these are port tuned. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so the uh, intake actual goes from here all the way to the back of the airbox. Looks like this is probably a temperature. So pretty cool. Just like that, you swap out the filter. Very, very easy. Um, once I get to my 6,000 miles, um, I'm gonna be doing a DIY on the spark plugs, air filter, and oil change. I'll show you guys how to do all that maintenance on this one once I actually hit the mileage for it. Um, right now, it's rainy season here, apparently in California. Uh, so I cannot do anything with my bike until it stops raining. Oh, another thing. This is directional. You'll see here, there's a little air tube here for the filter to actually breathe air. There's a notch right here to tell you where this stupid triangle goes. Okay. That's how it lines up the triangle for you. So my next DIYs that we're gonna have on this bike, number one, the big maintenance, I call it the big three, intake, spark, and oil. Uh, the fourth one, because the bike has one more uh, maintenance that's extremely vital, is the chain with a tensioning guide and lubing. So I'm gonna, when I get the owner's, once I, uh, once I read through my entire owner's manual and my repair manual, I will give you guys you know, step by step on how to tension the bike and the chain and everything else on this guy. That way you guys can do it at home as well and I'll also provide a list of tools that's needed to do the job. But right now, that's it. So thanks for watching this episode of Pinchy House Garage with Motorcycles Now. And hopefully you enjoyed my 2022 Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 um, breakdown of the seat and elect uh, electronic system guide here. Uh, we'll come back again and we'll do a more thorough breakdown on other portions of the bike when we actually get to that point on dismantling a lot of stuff, um, especially for performance gains. Thanks again, everybody. Peace out and you guys have yourself a wonderful day.